Um, Andre, your thoughts, please. So I think there is this key MLETR uh, trend, and the, the model law was published in 2017. Some jurisdictions have adopted it, and, and the UK, as Emmanuel said, uh, is going to be a key uh, trigger because the English law uh, is, um, is uh, key in, in global trade. But there is another development. I mean, Emmanuel said code, uh, law, code needs law. I think that's right. Uh, and the technology world has uh, progressed a lot. And cryptography in particular, together with blockchain, now enables basically to digitize uh, uh, the ownership of a, an electronic record, to digitize the transfer of ownership, to demonstrate the exclusive ownership of a particular electronic record. And this could not be done 10 years ago, unless you had a uh, like a club structure where you agreed with a central database that that would be the custodian. Now technology, and again, it's mainly cryptography with uh, you know, electronic signatures, of course, but also blockchain enables you to have a, an electronic record represented as a file that can be transferred between parties without all those parties being connected to the same platform. So really freely transferable documents. And that's what technology brings and it's very recent technology in response to the MLETR, which is a, a legal framework, a legal requirement. So the two together now enables banks to serve their clients, indeed, in a very seamless fashion so that uh, there's no disruption. Uh, what they're going to see on screen is not just a scanned copy of a paper document, but is a, the actual original document, whether it represents a guarantee, a bill of exchange, or prom note. And, and uh, the marriage of the two, the legal developments around the countries through the jurisdictions aligning with MLETR, together with the technology world bringing new technologies, and again, mainly cryptography, uh, uh, is very promising because now banks can uh, take advantage of those technologies to serve their clients in a fully electronic way. And we can go much further because once you digitize those documents, you can organize, you know, uh, uh, fraud protection, you can track the financing status of a particular instrument to make, to fight double funding of, of uh, you know, specific instruments or double use of specific instruments as a collateral. So this is an additional value proposition, but I think I want to highlight it because for banks, this is sometimes the, the key to, 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 to be protected from a fraud perspective rather than the digitization, which is sometimes a, is seen as an intermediary step. Thank you.